In this video, I'm going to show you a 12 minute segment from the new Modern Exteriors Cinema 4D training video. In this part, we'll go through how to create your very own custom sky gradient without having to fumble around with the physical sky settings. If you like what you see, the full six and a half hour video collection is available on 3dfluff.com. So for now, I hope you enjoy this video. And I'm just going to go for the simplest, most controllable option there is. A sky object. There you go, there's our default green material. Uh, and I'm going to add my own material to it. So this, we can just drop it on there now to say goodbye to the green. Uh, a sky object with nothing more than a gradient. Uh, the simplicity and control of this should not be underestimated. So in my new sky material, under the color, so whether you use color or luminance doesn't actually make any difference, uh, but we'll leave it in the color because it's just already turned on. Now I'm going to open this up and inside I shall throw a gradient object. Now what we have in here, let's uh, zoom out, take a wider look. We have this gradient which swings around left and right from black through gray to white again. So the obvious problem we first have here is that the gradient is running the wrong way. So let's open up our gradient. And in here, here's the gradient itself, and the next setting is what direction it goes in. So you can have diagonal ones, round ones, but these first two are basically horizontal and vertical. So we're currently on U. And if U doesn't work, try V. Okay, so we now have a gradient going from black down there to white up here. So in order for us to control this, we're going to be using this gradient gadget. Oops, uh, we're going to be using this gradient gadget to try and make a sky. So an obvious thing is that at the top of the sky, it should probably be blue. We're going to go for a sort of a late afternoon. So still a blue sky, but we're going to be getting some orange, yellowy, pinky sunset just at the horizon. So top of the sky, double click the, the, uh, the knot at the right side, and we can choose a color. So we're just gonna go for a nice blue color. Uh, if you're after a little bit of advice on how to choose colors for skies, by the way, don't use RGB, don't use HSV, go for Kelvin. This first slider is a pretty good rough approximation of the colors you get in the sky at night. We will need to tweak them, but it gets you, gets you going. So we'll go for a nice strong blue at the top of the sky. And down at the horizon, well, by this point, it should have reached a sort of a nicer, warmer, orangey sunset color. Okay, so we've got this very uh, 1980s Californian beach sunset with all this nice pinky purple in. Uh, but I want to I wanna get this range of colors more where I can see them. I, I don't want the orange all the way down there. I want it at the horizon. And I could I could drag this thing halfway up to the middle because that would be the horizon. But I'm squashing my usable space down quite a bit if I do this. So what I'm going to do is offset the texture slightly. On the sky, in the material, we have U and V, horizontal, vertical. And this lets us determine how far round the texture goes and how high up and down the texture goes. So if I set the length vertically to 50%, this means my gradient will only use half the sky. So my gradient now stops at the horizon perfectly and it then goes from the orange there up to the blue in the middle. So at least now my gradient, I can use the full width of it to control the entire horizon. Now there is a little danger here in that I'm gonna be sort of a little bit high up looking down at my building and that I run the risk of this orange sky suddenly turning blue again because it's hit the horizon and then it started repeating. So on my sky's texture, I'm not going to set it down to 50%. I'm going to give it a couple more percentage points just so that this orange can at least push further down below the horizon. 
all of this, all of this blue, will now be hidden by the ground, by the floor. I, I, I don't really have to worry about that anymore. Okay, so what we're going to do is gradient. Uh, we're going to try and make it look like a sky. So we should be able to do this in real time. And it, by the way, it might be a good idea to actually just sort of uh, decide roughly where we want our camera to be at this point in time. Um, so let's let's just completely reset the camera so there's no weird settings. Uh, where have we gone? View frame default. Okay. So I'm going to say very roughly. I want our shot to be, uh, oh, by the way, we should also set the aspect ratio. Uh, keep in mind, in our render settings, this is the aspect. Uh, the default is 16 by nine, which I tell you what, I'll actually stick with. This is, this is what I will work to, a nice 16 by nine ratio. Okay, so you can see this dark area here. This is where we're gonna get things cut off. So I'm only really looking at this section within, within the middle. So ignore these two black strips on either side. So in terms of a rendering, I'm gonna say roughly about, let's say sort of roughly eye height with whoever's gonna be standing inside. So let's, let's say kind of about here. And just to make sure we don't lose the view, let's very temporarily throw in a camera, just so we can get back to the shot if need be. Right, so I'm gonna be adjusting my, my sky for this shot. So in the sky, open up the gradient, pop that over there. And first of all, let's try and work out where along the gradient the top of my screen is. So if I move this blue, we'll see it in real time. But uh, you can see my gradient has kind of stopped about here. This is all a big slab of solid blue there. If I move this up, just trying to work out roughly whereabouts. So yeah, that's about in the right place there. So from here to here, this is my visible sky. So this is the bit I'm gonna concentrate on the most. And the rest of it, well, we, we might just throw something slightly different further up into the night sky up above us. So color-wise, uh, by the way, feel free to make your window larger if it lets you see the gradient more easily. Okay, so I like the blue. That's okay, but I don't want it going quite so orange, quite so quick. I'd rather have a bit of a more blue sky and then a, a quick little bit of golden horizon at the edge. So I'm going to click another bit of blue. So these are both the same. And I'll pop one of them maybe about here. But I don't want these two shades of blue to be absolutely identical. So the one near the top, I'll make this a bit more of a, oops, I'll make this a bit more of a, a vivid, stronger, maybe darker blue. There we go. And I'll tell you what, up in the night sky over here, I'll just pop another knot for a moment and I'll make this even bluer and even darker. So there's now sort of a, a deeper, sort of almost evening night sky up above. Maybe we've gone a little bit too far, so we'll just put a slightly lighter shade in. Okay, now as the, for the horizon, uh, I'm not quite sure I quite want this pinkiness in there. Between the blue and the orange, you're gonna get this slight hint of pink. Um, but I wanna try and tone that back. So I'm gonna pop another knot in the middle between these. And I'm just gonna tone the color off. I'd rather it stay sort of a bit more bluish, but just quite pale. So I want it to fade down through blue, down to a sort of hazy, distant white, and then, then I'll have that sort of a uh, horizon hit the orange. So let's pop this over here a little bit. Let's move this guy up. Uh, maybe throw in a little bit of a, a more yellowy golden color. So, by the way, do feel free to go find yourself some nice reference. Just fire up a web browser, look for a nice uh, sunset image. Uh, and just sort of study the kind of colors you get. I mean, okay, we're not going for these uh, deep red ones and clearly a lot of these colors are really, really uh, overcooked. Uh, okay, maybe sunset wasn't the best image to look for. Let's see, uh, let's just search for a sky gradient. Okay, so something a bit more like this, a bit more realistic. Um, 
do, 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 do. Surprisingly not that great reference on here. Uh, a good website, by the way, cgskies.com. They have lots of skies. Uh, they're based on images, but I'm actually just going to be nicking some uh, colours and some shades. So I quite like this guy here, for example. So what I'm going to do is make use of maybe Cinema's uh, colour picker. So if I'm trying to get my, my colour blue right, uh, I'm not going to be able to quite do this on screen, I'm afraid, because every time I click on Cinema's window, it's going to uh, hide my web browser. But basically, if I, if I just quickly throw this off to the side, what I can do is pick on one of these, and when you want to choose a colour, rather than messing around with the sliders, you do have a colour picker. I can click on this, and then just nip over to my picture of the sunset to the side, and click, and it will now sample that sky colour and insert it into my image. Uh, anyway, that's gone a bit dark, but it, it, it is one option you have. You can just sort of uh, nick some nice sky colours instead. But this is the kind of thing I'm aiming for. Right, uh, okay, maybe not quite so yellow, a little bit more orange, a little bit less saturated, something around there. I think that's probably closer to what we're after. Uh, again, anyway, we can come back in and tweak this. We haven't got to get this absolutely perfect spot on first time round. Um, let's leave it quite simple. Uh, now, another bit of advice. When working with gradients, consider the interpolation between the colours. If I pop this out into its own window, you can see there's quite distinct layers. There's a dark blue there, there's a medium blue there, there's a sort of another hint in the middle. You can quite clearly see where I've chosen my colours in the gradient here. If you unfold the gradient gadget with this little black arrow, we have interpolation. You've got to choose which type works best. Um, the one which is just the most simple and straightforward and generally the smoothest possible is linear. This simply means blend from one colour to the next. Don't try to add any weighting, don't try and make it lean closer towards one colour or anything else. Just go for a linear gradient. And this tends to give you a fairly smooth gradient. Um, if not, I find cubic knots can also be a nice good alternative as well might get a little tiny bit smoother, but they're very similar, cubic knots and linear. Uh, anyway, that is all I'm going to do for the sky. That's just going to be my nice gradient. Keep in mind, there will be walls and plants, so a lot of this orange is actually going to end up getting covered up, so don't worry too much about how much orange we have down here. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's get into a realm of having a quick test render, shall we? Um, or that, actually, I tell you what, let's uh, save that for our next chunk of video. Let's pause here for a moment and we'll do the rendering in our next video.